carefully. Then I will talk about fin fat. Okay, so what is fin fat? So here I show something called double gates, but let's just look at the plot. Here it shows the gate length. How long is the gate length? 10 nanometer, 20 nanometer, all the way to 100 nanometer. And then here it shows what the silicon thickness to the uh, gate length ratio. If it is within this gray region, then you have a good transistor, low short channel effect. You have a good transi transistor. This means good transistor. Okay? Now, if you have only one gate, what is the meaning to have one gate? This means this. About transistor M plus, M plus, SI, and then gate. This is one gate. If you have two gates, what is the meaning of two gates? It means this. This is not even SOI. It's similar to fully depleted SOI, but the top and bottom have the same gate. Gate one, gate two. You use two gates to control the slab of silicon. Just like you press the hose, water hose, instead of pressing with one finger, you use two fingers pressing in the opposite direction to turn it on and off. What is the meaning of four gates? Then we need to have a 3D view. So this is the silicon, right? This is silicon. And we're going to surround it Something like this. So this is the gate. You just wrap the silicon wire with all direct, for all direction. And that here we call it four gate. Is this okay? Now maybe I should do a cross section, right? To show what, what is this. If I do a cross section. I better don't draw here. I just say, uh, Cross session, cross session under the gate, it will be like this. I have the silicon, and then I have the gate. Here. Okay, I cut it. And so you see that I'm controlling the wire by the gate sur surrounding. Is that okay? Yeah. So here, then what is this? What does this mean, right? So for example, let's look at one example, uh, one by one. If I look at a gate length of 40 nanometer, it tells me that if I can make the thickness of my silicon, okay, I actually say something wrong. This is not bulk uh, when I say one gate. This is uh, talking about SOI. Sorry for that. Here is SOI, but, but I mean, very oxide. Okay. So, so it is one gate, but you have uh, only one uh, is SOI, okay? So we want to make the silicon thickness. This is the silicon thickness, right? So it means that I want to make this to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 times 40 equals to eight nanometer. It means that if my gate length is 40 nanometer, you better make this eight nanometer so that I have a good transistor. If you make this too large, then I don't have a good transistor for one gate. Do you guys get this? The ability to use the graph is not that important, but I hope you can understand the problem we are talking about. Gate length is here. 
The design problem is what should be the thickness of this guy in order to have a good transistor. You make it very thick, no, it won't be a good transistor. You need to be within this region and it say that at least you need about 0 0.2 times the gate length, which is 8 nanometer to make a good transistor. Okay. Now, how about for double gate? For double gate, if you are 40 nanometer, then I go up. It say that I only need 0 0.4 times, let me use another color. 0 0.4 times 40, which is 16 nanometer. What well, basically is saying that, okay, now if your gate length is 40 nanometer, you will get a good transistor even your thickness is 16 nanometer. You don't need to make it as far, small as 8 nanometer. So this technology wise is easier, right? Because too thin will cause some problem like uniformity issue or whatever. Right, so 2K because they have better control, so as a result, you can have a thicker channel, right? Now, what if I keep going to 4 gate? We take this as an example. Then it say that, well, if you have 4 gates, then your channel length is 40 nanometer, you can have a 32 nanometer wide transistor. Right? So basically it's saying that here, you can ex have it as thick as 32 nanometer when your gate length is 40 nanometer. Okay, uh, try to understand what I'm saying uh, by watching this video again. But the main point we want to get back is two. You can have one gate, two gates or three gate transistor. Manufacturing is more difficult when you have more gate. But when you have more gates, you have better control. To avoid short channel effect, you don't need very thin silica. That is the story here. But if you can do the math, understand the graph like what I'm doing, then you understand much better this topic. Okay, any questions? Now then, we want to talk about a type of new transistor which uh, was used in 40 nanometer and beyond. Actually, I forgot if they use in 22 by Intel. Uh, but anyway, now look at this. This is the wafer, the, our usual wafer. We already know the wafer, right? What we are doing is that we put the silicon as a fin, just like the fin of a fish. This is sauce, this is drink, this is sauce, this is drink, and this is the fin. Right? So this is the transport, this is the transistor itself. And how do we turn it on and off? We wrap it by the gate. Now if you wrap it so the oxide are everywhere, have the same thickness, it looks like you have three gates. That's called tri-gate. If you compare to what I show here, this one is four gates, right? Here is the same, except that I don't have the bottom gate, right? And here I have a fake mask. We call it hard mask due to manufacturing reason. We were not able to make a thin gate here. So this hard mask left there, hard mask left there. But so it has a very bad gate control as if this part has no control, okay? So you effectively has two gates from on the two side. So that is called fin fat, like the fin of a fish. Any questions? No, it's an insulator. This is a, we call it fake insulator. left from process. Okay, this is due to process reason. At the beginning, uh, people were not able to 
make the fin fat without leaving the hard mass due to the lithography reason, right? So uh, I think UC Berkeley uh, realized this at the very beginning, right? And uh, they have this mass. At that time, I was a student there, although they already done this when I joined, but they have were trying to improve this. Okay, so let's do a look how to make the fin fat. Okay, so uh, I got this from this book. So how do they make the fin fat? This is just a toy uh, example. Okay, so it's not really uh, very high fidelity, but we get an idea. Still, silicon on insulator, right? So if we're just using SOI, we would have we would have built transistor on top of this. For example, I would build the M plus, M plus, and then gates, right? If I'm doing the SOI. But now we are doing the fin fat. So what do we do? First, you will pattern the silicon with the fin. So I have a fin 3D sitting on top of the wafer. After that, I deposit gates dielectric. So here, what you are seeing is this. I first have the oxide, and then maybe metal or poly, right? Depends on your process. Polysilicon or metal. Now here, you see that because now this is a, have a topology that is not flat, it's very important to do polishing. What people do here is called CMP. Chemical. Mechanical polishing. This is a this was a very important invention at that time, not for fin fat, but uh, in order to have many layers uh, on the wafer. Because if you don't polish it to be flat, then the lithography will be a problem. Because when we try to define a feature, different location on the wafer will have a different uh, distance to the focus of the lens then you won't be able to form a good image. So they use this chemical mechanical polishing, which you combine the chemical and mechanical method. They really have a pet, just keep polishing the wafer, okay? Yeah. Now, so from here, then we define the mass to pattern the gate, right? So now the gate is like this. This is the gate. So I would like to talk about a few quantity. Now this is called the fin height. This is called the fin width. Okay, and this is the gate length. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so let me show you again. After polishing with lithography and etch away, we don't want then you have a gate surrounding the fin. And then we do implantation. For example, we do N plus, because the gate is blocking, your middle won't get N plus. At the back, you also get N plus at the back. Right? And then of course this becomes source, and then the back becomes drain, right? And after that, we will do some spacer offsets to avoid the gate touching the source chain. And then we will do epitaxial growth. Now, this graph is not very nice. We can look at this TCAT simulation. So this epitaxial growth is that, remember we actually have just a rectangular shape after we uh, etch it. We will just grow it in a chamber gradually growth with silicon germanium or silic uh, uh, mostly silicon germanium or silicon. So you keep depositing the atom on top of it with precursor, then it becomes larger and larger, right? So that is what you get eventually. Okay, so look, look at it. This is the fin, right? This is the gate, if you cannot see it. This is the gate. This is the source. This is the drain. Originally, it has a very fin, uh, slab, but now after growing the epi, then we have a very thick source and drain. Why do we want to do this? Because that can reduce the contact resistance. With this one later, we're going to deposit metal on top of it and probe and contact it to other places. Okay, 
So why when we grow it, why do we why we did not just get a rectangular shape? Do you have any idea? I'm growing yeah. Uh, that, uh, but we have a spacer here, so it won't touch the gate. Uh, here, here is not clear. We removed the spacer already, but we have the spacer here, so it won't touch the gate. But what I'm saying is that why it does not just grow like this? This is wrong. It does not just grow rectangular. It becomes a diamond shape. Any idea? That is just because your growth rate is different in different direction. Or I just say growth rate is an isotropic. Okay. So the uh, take home message is again, you do need to have this epitaxial growth and they have this diamond shape. Uh, just know about this. Now, FinFET is a pretty new technology, but nowadays we talk about nano wire, nano sheet. It's the same. You also need to grow this epitaxy. You will see this type of shape, but I, I won't cover nano wire, nano sheet here. Okay, that's how we make the FinFET. Any questions? So from here, I want to say another thing is there are two types of FinFET. One is bulk and other is SOI, okay? Now on the left, actually is SOI. So what do we do? What I show you was just SOI, right? We have an oxide here. This is the oxide. This is a silicon on insulator. You pattern it and then you get the fin, right? Again, this is uh, oxide, right? And then you have the fin here. And once you have the fin, then you can grow it. So what is the benefit of SOI is that you don't have leakage path at the bottom because the gate, right, it is only a three dimension, uh, three di in three direction, you control it in three direction, even if you, uh, you don't have the hard mass, right? So if you don't do it well, you can lead at the bottom, but here, because it's outside, so it won't leak from source to drain, right? Like here. However, this is expensive and also it has self-heating if you use SOI fin fat. Another is bulk fin fat, which is cheaper. But in order to make it, you need to avoid the leakage. So again, this is just silicon. This is silicon. But however, this is heavily doped silicon. The, 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 the blue one is doped, heavily doped silicon. And of course, this is, so they are just the, the same silicon, right? So we will pattern it, we etch it all the way to here. And then we deposit oxide and recess it so that we cover everything by oxide. However, the fin is not on top of oxide. But this is a heavily doped region. If you look at here, because it's heavily doped, this source string will not touch each other. Current will, will not go through the bottom with this heavily doped. Think about if you don't have this heavily doped, what we call the anti-punch through. This is called anti-punch through doping, right? Basically, it is like here. It is to avoid the source and drain to punch through to each other when you have a high voltage. For SOI, this whole thing is SOI, is uh, is outside, so you don't have this problem, right? So with bulk fin fat, it's cheaper because you don't need SOI wafer. Better heat transport because now the heat can go through here. Also, you can control the body, right? Uh, potential. If it's SOI, it's difficult to control, but you need anti-punch food implant. Okay, so two types of fin fat. Bulk fin fat and SOI fin fat. So then uh, let's continue.